in my life, uh, I've been a beneficiary of four silver bull markets. And they're truly spectacular events. At age 71, I'd like to experience just one more. Uh, silver equities represents about 2.5% of my speculative portfolio. So a, a fairly small proportion of my net worth. If we experience a silver bull market, uh, I expect that 2.5% of my portfolio to become 25% of my portfolio. Um, so I, I own my silver portfolio, at least the speculative part of my portfolio, purely uh, with the part of my brain that's focused on greed. Uh, high risk, high reward. Let me give you a couple statistical uh, examples. In the decade of the 1970s, uh, before I was <laughs> wealthy enough to buy a lot of stuff or smart enough to identify what to buy, I watched Coeur d'Alene Mines, the Coeur that you just referred to earlier, then called Coeur d'Alene, go from 10 cents to $65 in 10 years. Uh, that sort of caught my attention. Rick Rule, a well-known financial expert with 50 years of investment business experience, in one of his recent interviews with Danny, ranked a bunch of mid to large cap silver stocks. He believes silver and silver mining stocks are ready for a huge bull run and could offer more than 1,000% return in the long run. I'd like to say it takes a lot of time to research and make these videos for you guys. I'll appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Now let's start watching this amazing news segment by Rick Rule. So let's go ahead and pivot over to silver. Great. First on the list is Pan American Silver. I have Pan American Silver as a four. Uh, looking to upgrade it to a three if I get breakthroughs either in Guatemala or Argentina. The explanation of that is that uh, Pan American has two spectacular assets which aren't producing for them in those locations. Both of them are 500 million ounce high-grade silver deposits. Both are non-producing as a consequence of politics. I think that both of those deposits are built into Pan American for free. Uh, and if I get any uh, movement on either of those, I will upgrade it to a three. The process in Pan American right now involves digesting the assets that they acquired from Yamana, disposing of the redundant assets and improving their balance sheet. Uh, and they've done a reasonable job of that so far. But the upside from my point of view is all about the assets that are shut in politically. And Vizsla Silver. Vizsla Silver, if you can afford exploration risk, I have it as a four. Uh uh, and I have it as a four as opposed to a three simply because the share prices perform so well. You know, <laughs> part of it is the, the price that you pay for the size of the prize. Uh, Vizsla is a great deposit. It's well drilled, uh, it, meaning that I have high confidence in the existing data. Uh, I have high confidence, too, that they've reached their under, the understanding of the deposit where the exploration is becoming predictive. They know enough from prior data that they can gear future exploration to probabilities as opposed to possibilities. In my life, that's been a sort of a fulcrum point for deposits growing both by way of tons and grade. So I'm very attracted to Visla. Okay, so Fortuna Silver Mines. Fortuna Silver isn't a silver company anymore, really. Uh, by revenue, they're a gold company. It's important to know that. They've done a great job of implementation. Um, they, their expertise was narrow vein, high grade underground mines in Peru and Mexico. They pivoted from there to a high altitude, low grade open pit in Argentina, and they really stumbled. Uh, they were way behind schedule, way above budget. They got their market cap cut in half, uh, but they persevered and they made that mine work. Uh, and then improbably they went to Africa, having lots of expertise in Latin America Improbably, too, thus far in Africa, they've succeeded. Uh, so uh, I have them as a four. Uh, my criticisms of them would be, again, uh, tier two and tier three mines. Uh, no tier one deposit. Bueno Ventura Mining Company. Uh, bueno Ventura I have as a four. Very, very high quality assets. Very, very high quality people. Uh, local, regional, and national political risk uh, in Peru. Right now, at the top of Peru, the administration is very pro-mining. In some of the departments of 
Peru, which is to say some of the localities uh, of Peru, the situation is much more challenging. There has been a history in Peru where the social benefits of mining have accrued to the capital, Lima, and the regions that bore the cost got none of the benefit. In mining parlance, uh, Lima got the money and the regions got the shaft. And the consequence of that is that Buenaventura faces real sociological and political challenges in rural Peru uh, expanding. And if the federal administration in Peru were to change to a more leftist administration, uh, the family that controls uh, Buenaventura would be viewed by that government as local capitalist caciques. Uh, it's impossible, however, to construct a high-quality silver portfolio without including Buenaventura. Here's another one. Uh, Coer Mining, C-O-E-U-R Mining. Coer, Coer, Coer Mining. Uh, leverage to the silver price in terms of perception probably more a gold producer than a silver producer. But both Coor and uh, Hecla have been brand names in the silver space in the United States for 50 years. The shareholder base is highly responsive to moves uh, in the silver price. Uh, I have Coor as a five verging on a six, uh, being downgraded not for performance, but simply because of share price performance. The, uh, the stock is up fairly substantially uh, in, the last, in the last six months. I need to tell your audience, particularly your trading audience, that if we experience a breakout in silver, that the breakout that you'll see in Coor and Hecla, irrespective of the underlying quality, will be spectacular. Orla Mining. Uh, Orla, uh, good people, good assets, albeit second tier assets. I have them as a five. Uh, I expect both assets to get better. Again, my criticism would be uh, tier two assets, no tier one asset. Mag Silver? Mag Silver, I have as a five. Um, I own it. Uh, I'm a silver bull. I like high quality deposits. I think that I, I think the, the company is fully priced, but I think that it will continue to uh, impress people in terms of their operating results. And I continue to believe that there's a lot of exploration upside with the company. Uh, they are joint venture partners uh, with uh, Fresnillo, the largest primary silver producer in the world. Uh, they brought the deposit into production when they had enough reserve and resource to sustain the capital expenditure. Now I think they'll use the free cash flow to go back and finish off exploring uh, the resource. And I think that there will be some exploration surprises to the upside. What about First Majestic? Uh, First Majestic uh, I have as a six. I'm personally very friendly with Keith Newmeyer, the CEO. I have a lot of time for him. Uh, he has spent probably $80 million on financial public relations in the last 15 years, which means that his audience is highly responsive to the silver price. They've done a great job of implementation, buying old, tired mines and revitalizing them. The most recent one they bought, uh, Jarrett Canyon, uh, is going to be a challenge. Uh, that's why I have it as a six, not as a five. I have to see whether Keith and his team can work the same magic at Jarrett Canyon that they did at San Dimas. Uh, until I've seen evidence of an operating turnaround uh, at Jarrett, I'm not going to buy the stock. Okay. So what about Endeavor? Endeavor Silver or Endeavor, Endeavor Silver. Mining? Uh, Endeavor Silver. Endeavor. Endeavor Silver I have as a six, uh, uh, highly leveraged the silver price, but a collection of lower quality assets. And so what's kind of your, in similar fashion, what's kind of like your overall take of the silver market in general? Uh, in my life, uh, I've been a beneficiary of four silver bull markets. And they're truly spectacular events. At age 71, I'd like to experience just one more. Uh, silver equities represents about two and a half percent of my speculative portfolio. So a, a fairly small proportion of my net worth. If we experience a silver bull market, uh, I expect that 2.5% of my portfolio to become 25% of my portfolio. Um, so I, I own my silver portfolio, at least the speculative part of my portfolio, purely uh, with the part of my brain that's focused on greed. Uh, high risk, high reward. Let me give you a couple statistical uh, examples. In the decade of the 1970s, uh, before I was 
<laughs> wealthy enough to buy a lot of stuff or smart enough to identify what to buy. I watched Coeur d'Alene Mines, the Coeur that you just referred to earlier, then called Coeur d'Alene, go from 10 cents to $65 in 10 years. Uh, that sort of caught my attention, you know. Uh, I didn't own it, sadly, so it was only of academic interest. Uh, fast forwarding to the end of the decade of the 80s, the beginning of the decade of the 90s, I underwrote two silver mining companies, one Silver Standard at 72 cents with a full warrant. Six years later, it was a $45 stock. Uh, I also underwrote Pan American Silver for Ross Beatty at 50 cents, and it too uh, went to $40. <laughs> um, when the generalist money gets attracted to the precious metals sector, uh, precious metals bull markets are always led by gold. But when the generalist money gets attracted to the narrative and they start to come into the silver space, there is not enough market cap among the legitimate silver companies and the silver juniors to hold the money. Doug Casey likens it to trying to siphon Hoover Dam through a garden hose. Uh, and truly spectacular things happen to market caps. So uh, I hope that answers the question. It's something that speculators need to allow to take time. It can easily take five years for that to occur. And you have to endure absolutely breathtaking volatility. It's, a quin, it's akin to being a rodeo rider. But the rewards that you reap, uh, should your timing and patience be correct, are unbelievable. What do you think of Rick Rule's ratings for silver mining stocks? Do you think that gold and silver mining stocks are poised for huge profits with the rising gold and silver demand? We would like to know your valuable opinion so post your comment down below and watch this next video right here because it's a perfect fit for you. I see you on the other side.